Hello once again guys, Carl here from the Gamers Camp. Today I am going to talk about 7 Days to Die. A game so fun, yet needs a lot of improvement. This will be my first impression of the game, so if you have not bought the game yet, I hope you learned something from this video and I hope it can help you decide whether to get it or not. So let's start the video. 7 Days to Die is a survival zombie game that was released as an early access title in December 2013. It is part of the huge surge of early access survival games that also came out in the same year, such as Rust, Don't Starve in the Forest. Survival games as early access titles had started to become a trend in 2013 and it lasted for a couple of years. Most of the games I mentioned earlier have actually had their full release a few years ago. Unfortunately, that is not the case for 7 Days to Die. By the time this video is released, it is on its Alpha 19.6 version, and based on my research, they launch big updates once a year, while incremental bug fixes of that update come occasionally. It means Alpha 20 may come in before the year ends, and I might make another follow-up video or article for it. I actually bought 7 Days to Die 7 years ago, and I only started playing it a few weeks ago because I didn't really like how the visual was when it first came out. My friends and I set up a server and we played a lot of it for the past weeks, and it was just so much fun. I also played solo with mods just to test things on my own. Thus, this is my impression of my journey in 7 Days to Die Alpha 19.6. Quick note, this is the PC version, this is not the console version as it has not been updated for a very long time. To start the impression, I am going to say that the community is very much alive. You can hop in on a lot of public servers and enjoy playing it. Or you can set up your own server locally or rent a dedicated server online if you and your friends want to play without strangers. Of course, you can also play solo offline if you want. The world can either be pre-generated or developer created, in which the latter is for the best newbie experience. You can generate your own world which takes some time and from what I have seen it is like 50-50 on how good it will be and there are multiple times that roads may not make sense and even the good seats you can find online do have that issue as well. On my first solo run which I am doing right now when I was writing this impression, I looked for the name of the best seats that you can play on. You can easily google that but so far I have enjoyed that experience since it's a fresh new world to explore. However, I spent more time playing with my friends when we set up a server and it is easy since there are a lot of tutorials on the internet. We have hosted in Google Cloud and it works wonders especially with the ping since we always get less than 50 ms. There is some sort of customization in creating your server such as how much XP gain you are going to get, blood moon threat duration, will you drop everything if you get killed, and many more. You can easily change it before you start the server for experimentation. You can also customize your character which is surprisingly in-depth and you can create something that looks good or hideous, it is up to you. I enjoyed scaring my friends since my character looks like a zombie in the dark with his green skin and running in the dark can be scary. Once the world is created, you will spawn randomly in the world, most likely in the forest biome since this is the safest biome in the game. There will be a quick tutorial on how to craft the basic items and that's it. Everything you do here is all up to you, a true sandbox experience. The first few in-game weeks are probably the most exciting phase of 7 days to die. You explore the world as it is, you meet the first trader where you can do jobs for rewards and after doing a number of jobs, they will give you a special job to find another trader. In a sense, this is how they encourage you to check other biomes as there are other traders out there in your world as well. Moreover, there is also a leveling system in the game for progression. Anything you do in the game like killing a zombie, digging, cutting wood, etc. will earn you experience points. Once you level up, you can assign a point to a perk that you like. There are 5 main attributes which are perception, strength, fortitude, agility, and intellect. Each attribute has multiple perks, so if you play in multiplayer with friends, it is better to focus on a build like the medic, the tank, or the miner. On the other hand, if you play solo, it is recommended to be good at most things, but not all. It depends on your playstyle. I really like that there are so many perks to choose from, so you're not going to get tied by one build every time you start from scratch. 7 Days to Die utilizes a feature called Game Stage. This calculates your progress in the game, and in return will adjust the game mechanics like how good the loots that you will find in your surroundings, 
how many hordes will attack you or which zombies will spawn around you. I remember the first time I encountered a screamer and I was shocked to see it was running in daylight while screaming towards me. Sad to say I screamed as well. The game stage also adjusts the Blood Moon Horde. Blood Moon is a significant threat in the game as it will spawn horde after horde in a span of hours in the game. You cannot escape the zombies as they will pinpoint you even if you are on stealth. As a default, it will start every 7th night and that is where the name of the game came from. And it gets harder and harder every 7 days to defend. This is a good game feature to test the players how well they can defend and if their loots are automated defenses can save them from the upcoming horde. You can disable it if you want the Walking Dead vibes but I recommend you keep it on, especially on your first run. When we played in our server, uh, we always look forward to fighting the horde that made the server so laggy by the 8th Blood Moon event and they eventually destroyed our base and we just kept dying. It was so sad yet so funny at the same time how they did it as well. Tang ay nandoon yung dumudura sir. Ako yung naglalag. Wala ka ako. Uy, gumibuhay yung base. Gumibuhay yung base. Oh my god. Gag yung base na sira. Dahil dun sa dumudura sir. Well, okay, Rizal. Tangin na naglalag yung game ko. Hindi ako. Okay, goodbye. These zombies can dig too, so if you're planning an underground base, that is bound to get destroyed as well. To counter the threat, you must do some base building, and this game has it too. You can craft items that are for building like wood frames, cement, and many more. You can also upgrade them to be better and have more health. This forces you to do some mining and gathering up items before the invasion. Alternatively, you can buy these things from a trader as well, but that could be expensive. Surprisingly, you can even paint walls and even dye your weapons in the game. After the first 3 in-game weeks, I think you probably saw like 60% of the game as it is. It is not a bad thing since one day is like one hour in real time in default settings. The remaining 40% is probably exploring other biomes and there is always the looming threat of the Blood Moon event that kind of prevents you to explore other parts of the map and instead forces you to focus your time on building your defense before the last day of the week. If it's your first time playing, especially with friends, it is kind of fun to see how long your team would last in the game. On the other hand, if it, this is your second or third playthrough, it is exciting to do some role playing if you play solo like no Blood Moon threat every zombie is running, and just create your own story until you die. Another good thing about this game is that the modding scene is very active as well. However, since this is an early access title, the mods on the previous version will not work in the latest version most of the time. So modders have to keep updating their mods to work every time a big update is launched. I tried some lightweight mods like more spawn zombies in the vanilla version and it made the game much more exciting. There are full conversion mods that change the whole gameplay like Romero mod which makes 7 days to die, play like a Romero movie. That is fantastic and I will probably try that next time. So those are my impression of the game and now I would like to talk about what lacks about it and what needs to be improved. I guess the only major feature that lacks in this game is the AI NPC as they will make the world more alive in my opinion. Hostile, neutral, or friendly AI would make the single player experience much more fun. Imagine hiring mercenaries to help you defend your base during a Blood Moon event or a random bandit attack just to steal or destroy your stuff. There are mods that add NPCs in the current version of the game right now, but if it's implemented natively, it will be a game changer. The random world generation feature also needs some improvement. Broken roads or floating assets can be found around the regenerated world. It definitely needs work, but it is serviceable as of now. As for Navis Gain, sorry if I butchered that pronunciation, I guess it needs more smaller towns between biomes. Since I always found myself staring blankly at the barren road until I reach my next mission or the next trader. As for the lore in the game, there's almost nothing of sort regarding it. You can find some notes here and there, but it is mostly just side quests. But it would be nice to have journals from previous house owners on how they survive and eventually succumb to the zombies. 
The first time I played the game with my friends, uh, we coincidentally created our first base in the Grace Farm POI. And behold how surprised we were to find that there was a huge pig in the basement. The funniest thing was that when the first Blood Moon happened, we locked the tools to defend ourselves and eventually went down there anyway. Suffice to say, all of us died that night. Hitbox also needs to be improved, especially on multiplayer. It needs to be refined since there are so many times that attacks will not connect, which is annoying. Zombies can hit you even if you are far away from them already. Although I mostly notice it on multiplayer and I didn't see this issue on single player mode. Zombies need more variation also, and their AI is too smart, especially if they're locked onto you. They always find the weakest portion of the defense or building, and their pathfinding is just too accurate for a zombie. Traders need to have more job variation. Currently, there are only three, which are fetch, clear, and bird supplies. These three seem to encompass everything that you can do in the game, but with rewards. How about adding jobs like defend the trader's fort from zombies or even bandits once they are added to the game? I think that would be nice, right? Spawn more zombies in vanilla is another improvement that I can suggest. Uh, one of the mods that I tried is to increase it two times and it works great. Maybe add a slider on how many zombies can spawn around your vicinity. Lastly, uh, performance improvement. I mean, the game is smooth if you have a decent PC or laptop, but it gets worse over time. Some people suggested not to plant trees or at least cut them down quickly once they are fully grown. When we played in multiplayer, I believe it started in the fourth week that we had some performance issues during Blood Moon with the amounts of zombies that it is spawning. However, we did increase the spawn rate by 25% that time so that may have been one of the causes why it was so laggy. So that is basically what 7 Days to Die is. It is a fun zombie survival game. The foundation of a good game is there already. However, there are plenty of improvements that could be done, and I think they are focusing more on releasing new gameplay features rather than improving what they already released before, hence why we are stuck in this limbo. Um, the mods for this game are amazing as well. I highly recommend you to try them, especially the ones that will give more gameplay dynamic to make everything fresh again. 7 Days to Die is a very good buy, even at 33% off if you are planning to play multiplayer from the start. But if you're going to play exclusively solo, I would say and wait until 50% off before purchasing the game. Based on the previous prices, it always goes down 66% off the price if it's on sale anyway. So grab it with a couple of friends if that happens. So that's it. Um, let us know what you think of this game in the comment section. Do you love it or hate it? Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you subscribe, like, and share this video. See you guys next time. Bye.